friends, I am Omnisai here in my lair once more. And here for another video for the RPG A Day series of videos that again we have been doing all month to uplift the community and put out some good content so people have some fun things to think about and feel about. And I have been <clears throat> explaining uh, elements in my game and hopefully providing you with some something interesting or distracting or, you know, that, uh, you know, you might want to look into. And hopefully by the time it's done, my game will be out and available to you soonish. Today is the 27th, and the 27th word is favor. And um, again, favor means a couple things, which means we could take this in a few different directions. Uh, favor, for instance, may mean to prefer. Your favorite thing, for instance, is the thing that you favor. You prefer it. And most people I know have their preferences. They have their favorites in terms of games and styles as much as they have favorites of flavors of ice cream. Um, but uh, I generally try not to cling too hard to one thing in almost anything, honestly. Uh, with the exception of friends and family, I'm, I'm not all that clingy and, and committed to one thing all the time. I like v diversity. I like variety. I would be a fairly sad monkey if I had knowledge that all these different games exist like I have in my library over there, but I could only ever play one or maybe two of them. It just doesn't work for me. I like having, uh... The, the opportunity to try new things and, and try games with different perspectives. Just like I like different board games. I'll try almost anything once. So, you know, that's how that works. But of course, that's just one, uh, one option for the definition of favor. Then there's also favor as in a debt, uh, a service that you are, that you owe to someone. Or, you know, if you, you know, to do someone a favor, to owe someone a favor is to owe them some sort of service, assistance, what have you. And favor in some games, again, we're going to talk about games, is a valuable commodity. Oftentimes, it's some sort of a background element that a character has that they can call on and expect a certain amount of aid. They get value out of it by virtue of it being a part of their character, something that's on the character sheet. I have a favor from so-and-so, or this person owes me a favor, or I am favored by these people. And in those cases, uh, then usually it's some sort of narrative mechanic. You go to that person and ask for the favor. That works out pretty well, generally speaking. However, there are some games that also quantify these favors. And I'm not just talking necessarily about, okay, they owe me two favors. Uh, they don't work like genie wishes oftentimes. It's a relationship. It's, it's something that a person feels a certain level of indebtedness to you. For instance, many of my friends, if they asked me to do something for them, it would take something extraordinarily inconvenient or dangerous or illegal or immoral for me to say no. Um, or try to find some alternate to, to doing it. You know, if, if I call you my friend, I'd probably be willing to do something for you, whether that's help you move, whether that's uh, proofread something for you, um, give you some advice, um, feed you if you're hungry, you know, give you a place to stay for a day or two, sure. Um, that's all different levels of favor. Now, some people have friends that go in a, a wide range. Like, you have acquaintances that you know, and maybe if they ask to borrow 10 bucks from you, you might do it. But you'll keep tabs at that 10 bucks, and, you know, a couple weeks later, you'll go, hey, you know, I gave you 10 bucks, uh, like it back. Whereas a real friend, somebody who, you know, you have ties and experiences with, 
you give them the 10 bucks and you don't even think about it. You just assume they're going to give it back to you. Or if sometime when you need it, you might go, hey, buddy, remember when I loaned you that 10 bucks? Kind of need some money. You think you could loan me 10 bucks back? And, you know, it's, it's not as big of a deal. Well, of course, just like anything, dice file, you could represent that with dice. A dice. Um, having a favor trait uh, to somebody would basically, again, give you a sliding scale. So if they are an acquaintance, maybe you have a favor of that person at a D4. So, you know, I really need to, uh, let's see, I really need to borrow a car for an hour. No questions asked. Immediately. That's probably more than an acquaintance rolling a four-sided die might do. If you get lucky and you roll that four, which would make it a five, because it's maybe, you would probably also want to have, you know, your, your personal charisma, if you, if you have a, a superior personality that you could influence and persuade somebody, you know, add that. But that favor then, in that case, would almost act like gear. And just like anything else, if you botch that roll, it can actually hurt the amount of favor that you are owed and devalue your die, temporarily or permanently, depending on how you do it. Um, if you have a really strong favor on somebody, then the die value goes up. Yes, you still have a range. You might still roll a one, and they might not be able to help you at that time. But it's not because they don't want to. They can still go all the, the way up to, you know, possibly an eight. But in that case, it represents, you know, life is funny that way. Sometimes they don't have the ability to help you. Sometimes they have other more pressing things in their life than you. Uh, but, you know, that next time you catch them, they'll be right there for you. Or so they'll say. Um... It's a, it's a relatively simple uh, way of representing uh, something like favor. And those kind of non-physical traits that a person has sometimes can be just as useful as, you know, having the ability to do complex math. Sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that would be an example of that. Uh, favor is certainly one of the traits that you can get socially, included in backgrounds or given out as rewards for character development. Uh, contacts are another one. Not somebody who will do you a favor, but somebody who could easily give you information and perhaps perform some sort of light service. They aren't going to get their own hands dirty usually, but they will possibly hook you up with somebody who could, or they could do something within the sphere of their influence on your behalf. If you have a contact who is a police officer and you're like, you know, I've got a license plate, you think you could run this for me and find out, you know, Maybe this person has some speeding tickets or something. They might be in your system. They might be able to do it at no real risk to them. It's not terribly inconvenient. Your contact might pay off. On the other hand, if that same uh, police officer owes you a favor, you could be like, you know, if you have a big favor, say D8 level favor, and you're, you know, you... Uh, say you happen to be at a crime scene and the police officer shows up, you'd be like, any chance you could turn the body cameras off and pretend I'm not here? Now you've got a range. You know, if you roll low and you know your influence doesn't go so well, it'd be like, hey, it's my job. I can't. But if it's high enough and you're influential enough, it might do you a favor. Yeah, this one time, I'll look the other way. But you better not be involved in this. Or something like that. So, yeah, I think I think it'll work pretty well, especially if you want to take into account again another optional rule of uh, diminishing traits, meaning that you only have so much favor. Eventually, that person's feelings towards you—they may still be your friend, but they won't feel they owe you anymore. They'll feel that the debt has been squared, and that's you know, that's human nature in a lot of cases. There aren't very many people to whom your average person would ever feel indebted for life. Maybe if you saved their life or donated them an organ or something like that, there's otherwise not a whole lot of reasons that some people will unconditionally feel they owe a person a favor. So, uh, but those are just some thoughts uh, on, you know, my system and how that's, that's going to work. Uh, again, 
Uh, this will give you the option for as much diversity as you'd like in a game. And again, I think sometimes those kind of advantages really aren't explored in certain games. That's why Shadowrun was the first one that I came to that actually had that as a resource, Contacts, that I read and really appreciated. I had read uh, GURPS before that, and Contacts were a possibility there, but I really didn't consider it all that much. No character that I ever made really delved into that. But when you play Shadowrun, if you're really doing a good job of getting in the world and thinking as your character, they almost become a necessity. Before you do a run, when you're in the middle of a run, after a run, use your contacts. At least one or two. And maybe verify the, what you got from one with another one. It uh, may seem paranoid, but paranoia is what keeps you alive in Shadowrun, so I don't see it as a bad thing. Likewise, uh, a game like, oh, say, you know, if you, if you play more of a narrative style in Dungeons & Dragons rather than just going and crushing dungeons, you might build up a web of influences and things that might be very useful to you. Yeah, there's no hard mechanical stats for these contacts, but it's still important to know and use in the right campaign. So it's awfully nice to see those things just all coming together when you need them, having the people around you to help you out. It can be really rewarding as far as a, a, a culmination of all the hard work you put into a character assuming you put in a lot of hard work into your character, but when you do and, and things like that come out for your benefit so that you can get what you want accomplished, it's golden. So that's my uh, topic of favor for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was useful to you. And until next time, i just like to say I, Omnisai, here in my lair, wish you all the best. Happy gaming. We'll see you for another RPG A Day video. And farewell.